We are entering a new era of cyber attacks. The solar winds hack it underscored a rising and very disturbing trend, namely that tunneling in through an organization's supply chain. And you're hearing terms like island hopping and living off the land, they're becoming mainstream in the world of cybersecurity. And we're going to talk a little bit about ransomware and cyber with Manoj Nair, who is the GM of Metallic, a Commvault company, and Tim Carbon, who's a principal systems engineer with Mitchell International. Gents, welcome, thanks so much for coming on and talking to me about this very important topic. So, you know, Tim, I got to start with you. You know, you've, you're, the, you're the practitioner, you got to fight this battle every day. I, I, you know, you heard me up front, I feel like we're entering a new era, the, the adversary is is highly capable, very well funded. How are you thinking about you know, changes and protecting your, your data and creating things like air gaps? And what are you doing to solve this problem? I think the most important part, and this is just to start off with, is patching. Everything up to date. Most of the time someone's getting in or most of the time one of these viruses is replicating between the different systems, it's due to unpatched environments. And then number two is training. If your resources don't know not to click on something or to hover over something to look at it, then you are just gonna be exposing your environment over and over and over again. But when it all boils down to it, and it comes back to what I'm doing in the data protection world, in the backup and recovery, I have to look at not only how am I gonna get this data back, because if a system gets encrypted, we are going to look for recovery first. That's it, look for recovery first. But we also need to make sure that our environment is protected. Lock down our media agents, lock down our storage that we're connected to. And like you had mentioned before, use an air gap. And no one, I mean, everyone's been moving away from tape and it's understandable. There's a lot of resource utilization involved. There's a lot of people that you need in there, in your data center, moving things around. And it's a robotic machine that you have to rely on. Not only that, but recovery times can be slow. What I've found is Commvault has gone out there and they've offered us SaaS storage. This SaaS storage is somewhere else. We could be in AWS, we could be in Azure, we could be in GCP, but we can still connect to this SaaS storage and we never have to worry about someone having access to a data center and getting to our tapes. We don't have to worry about someone having tenant access and deleting our backups off of a particular tenant, which is something that we are going to see in the future if it's not out there already. So there's a lot that we have to do and protecting ourselves is very important. And Commvault is making it a lot easier. now. Thank you, Tim. So, so Manoj, I mean, you know, these things have probably been around for a while, but we're seeing really sort of, I talked about mainstream and a couple of things that are really disturbing. You know, we're seeing these, these, this malware come in and they're self-forming, they're, they're creating different signatures, but we're also seeing, you know, this idea of living off the land very stealthily, using your own tools against you. And then, then really disturbingly, we're seeing when you discover when, when, a, when, when a victim discovers that they're being you know, attacked and they respond, their incident response is triggering a very aggressive counterattack by the, the hackers where they've already exfiltrated really sensitive data. Then they'll, then they, and they're, they've been stealing and making monetizing your data and then they'll just encrypt it, hold it for ransom, threaten to release that sensitive data if you don't let, let them keep going really, really you know, disturbing. What's your perspective on this, this raising the bar that the bad guys have done and, and how we can keep pace? And Dave, uh, you know, I lived through uh, the nation state attack that happened uh, in 2012 with front door seat. Uh, I was at RSA as part of the leadership team. And, you know, at that time it was considered a, hey, this is a very unique and it's an advanced persistent threat. Uh, it took the resources of, a, of a, you know, one of the biggest nations in the world to mount something like that. And fast forward eight, nine years later, we're seeing that, you know, these kind of techniques have now been mainstreamed. Uh, you've got a lot of, uh, a lot of people who are, you know, figuring out not just, uh, they may not even care about your data, but they know you care about your data. 
So they're not trying to exfiltrate the data maybe to you know, uh, look for sensitive data and monetize it. That's just harder. Why not take it you know, directly from you? Um, in Q1 of 2021, uh, uh, the uh, average ransomware uh, ransom went up 43%. It's like 250K or something. That's just the, the ransom. And uh, we saw now that it's, uh, it's impacting day-to-day uh, -to -day lives. Uh, you saw the long uh, lines of the gas tanks, gas pumps uh, on the East Coast, you know, uh, the weekend before last. Uh, and here's, uh, you know, somebody who, uh, you know, had a ransomware attack. As the news uh, stories say, they paid for the ransom. And that was the recovery after paying 5 million was slow. So they had to go and uh, figure out how to recover from the backups and that was not fast enough. So, uh, you know, defense in depth is something that has uh, really been the mantra and, and just like protecting a home, right? You're not just looking at putting a, you know, a, an alarm on the front door, you have sensors on your windows, you have a fire alarm, you've got a safe, you got different things to, in terms of really thinking through different threats. And uh, Tim hit on a couple of those things, right? You, you, you really think about what is my weak link? What is my vulnerability? That vulnerability is now your software supply chain. So you're thinking about who am I buying things from? Are they taking care of stuff because they are now a new vector? And that's kind of the biggest, I would say, new thing that has now been mainstream. Like a lot of these techniques are getting mainstream. But the fact that a software supply chain itself that has been deployed en masse is now vulnerable and that will be monetized. It might have started with the nation state doing that, but then now you'll, you'll get the, you know, people trying to take, you know, uh, uh, take you for ransom will start weaponizing those same vulnerabilities. So really that data and making sure that your crown jewels, you have a fail safe way of protecting that. And it's not just, you know, you, you need to practice the readiness of that, like any system. You know, just having that there is not good enough. Like, can I detect issues? What is the ecosystem that's part of? How is my identity tracking who has got access to that? Uh, we've seen a lot of interesting things and it's part of why we started creating services like a air gap service in the cloud. The customer doesn't have to worry about managing credentials because even those were getting compromised. People were stealing the credentials to go delete the backup. So the, 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 you know, the, the steps keep leaping forward. There's a lot of money going in, in the research and development of malware and the industry in partnership with uh, customers in partnership with uh, local and federal authorities are going to have to figure out how to tackle this together. Yeah, so Tim, you, you, mean, you don't, I mean, Commvault, you don't think of you know, in being the cybersecurity space specifically, but those worlds are coming together, the data protection and, and security space. And, I would imagine for you as a practitioner, it's, it's challenging because you don't have a blank checkbook. I mean, yes, you can spend, uh, you have to spend uh, on cyber, but you have all these, uh, you talked about, you know, digital transformation uh, in an earlier discussion that we had, and you've got to figure out, okay, how do I apply AI and automation? You've got a talent gap. I mean, you can't hire people that have the skills. You, can, you just can't keep throwing people at the problem. So, so you don't have this unlimited budget I saw a stat, there's a company, it's, it's Cyber Security Ventures. They said by 2025, we'll, we'll lose uh, $10.5 trillion annually to cyber attacks. And I think, you know, if I look at who's ever numbers, you look at IDC, I think has one of the higher numbers out there. It's like a hundred billion that we spend each year on cyber. So it's infinitesimal compared to the, to the value that the, the bad guys are extracting. So how are you, how are you dealing with that complexity fragmented you know, security tooling, lack of, of, of ta talent, turnover, I mean, all this stuff, and the budget challenges. How, how do you deal with all that? It's, and I, I do not want to use this word, but it's as easy as research and staying on top of everything. Everyone knows you update your virus definitions. You keep that up to date. You close your firewall holes. You have denies at the very end of every firewall you make sure you keep track of these small things. At the same time, you leverage utilities that make it easier for you to do your job. The Commvault IDEA has a feature that keeps track of changes or modifications on a server. So if I have a server that's actively getting hit with a ransomware, Commvault reports me an alert and tells me, hey, we have had this many files modified within this time period. Look at it right now. 
So on top of everything else we have, because it's not a replacement for our virus protection, but it does help us and it does keep track of things. And Commvault, as well as a lot of other companies out there, are doing some great things in closing up small little gaps, in adding little features that could really help us move forward in the future and keep us more protected, I guess I should say. Yeah, well, Manoj, I mean, the backup corpus is the sort of the last line of defense. It's also, it also could be a first point of attack because all the valuable data is in there. So I'll give you the last word here on this segment. Thanks for doing this with me, guys. Uh, you know, how, how, do, how, how do you think the industry needs to approach this? It's not a, it's, you, can't, you can't go a little alone. You, you definitely need to collaborate. Your, your, your final thoughts. Um, that collaborate, share risk vectors, uh, making sure that systems are connected and they're not siloed. And that will really make sure our customers are getting the best out of uh, all of us. And uh, you have to build an intelligence into products, anything static, uh, just like you said, you know, if, you, if you, the backup is uh, where the crown jewels are, they're going to go after that. So your backup systems need to have AI ML. They need to be able to detect any kind of suspicious activity. You can't just kind of code it in and just expect that, it, you know, what you thought will work in the lab is how it's going to behave. So, but, but you know, it's, uh, and, and in general, uh, unless there is a, uh, you know, bigger penalty in terms of uh, the response to these kind of attacks, as long as they keep getting paid, they're going to keep doing this thing. So you got to, you know, follow the money is the simple word. To, you know, uh, let's take that, that you know, uh, the rich ecosystem that's funding them and replace it with a tight partnership between uh, companies and customers and partners and, and, and governments. Guys, well, I mean, the, the, the equation is pretty simple. You know, value equals benefit over cost. If you can increase the denominator for the bad guys, it'll lower their ROI and that's kind of your job. And uh, so keep up the good work, gents. Thanks so much for coming to theCUBE and talking to me about this very important topic. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And thank you for watching this CUBE conversation. This is Dave Vellante. We'll see you next time.